Ukraine's foreign minister has warned the EU against the temptation to loosen sanctions against Russia or to give in to President Vladimir Putin's demands. Punishing sanctions on Moscow have threatened the bloc's energy supplies. Still, EU foreign ministers say they are determined to continue supporting Ukraine despite the serious inflationary impact on their economies five months after Russia began its invasion. And Rosie Burchett joins us live. Rosie, EU foreign ministers insisting sanctions imposed on Russia are working, but still no end in sight to that war in Ukraine. How much longer can the bloc continue to keep up their support for Kiev? Well, European Union's Foreign Affairs Chief Josep Borrell says the bloc will not be stopping with its policy and its pursuit of tightening sanctions on Moscow. And in fact, foreign ministers gathered are expected to discuss a fresh round of sanctions on Russia during these talks. That will include tightening some, some existing sanctions, closing some loopholes and putting certain parts of Russian gold under future European Union sanctions. That will bring the European Union in line with some other G7 members. Now, Josep Borrell, who's the EU's foreign policy chief, was fiercely defensive of the EU's policy so far on his way into these talks. He said it's quite clear that these sanctions are having an impact, clear when you look at the Russian economy. However, he seemed to be responding to some criticism that has been levelled at the European Union, particularly by Hungarian Prime Minister Viktor Orban. Now, Josep Borrell did not name Czech Orban directly, but Orban has been speaking to press in the last few days, saying that the EU sanctions policy is a failure, that it's not been working. He said, first, he thought the EU was shooting itself in the foot. Now it appears to have shot itself in the lungs and is gasping for breath. Now, that is something that other EU leaders would refute. And in fact, we heard from Gabrielis Landsbergis, who's the who's Lithuanian foreign minister, saying he wants to see t sanctions tightened even further. And of course, that is a view most strongly echoed by Ukraine, who would like to, the, to see the EU really tighten the screws further. Ukraine says that every time European Union countries continue to purchase oil and gas from Russia, it's essentially helping Vladimir Putin, the Russian president, to fund its war machine. Now, EU t nations have been bit by bit imposing sanctions on Russian energy. They've uh, placed Russian coal imports under sanctions. They've placed most Russian oil imports under sanctions. Gas remains a big question mark for now. There is absolutely no agreement on that moving forward. And it is a very tricky topic among EU member states because, of course, citizens here in the European Union are increasingly feeling the fallout in their own pocket. All right, Rosie, in the last uh, half hour, the IEA has uh, come out to say it wants Europe to cut gas consumption immediately. Of course, no doubt in response to uh, actions from Russia too in the last few weeks, disrupt supplies to Europe, Aust uh, Austria, Germany, Italy, Slovakia, all feeling the pain there. What has been the impact of these uh, disruptions, which Russia calls technical so far? Well, so far, a dozen, 12 European Union countries have seen their gas supplies from Russia either wholly or partially disrupted. Now, some countries, including Poland and Bulgaria, have been subject to a total cutoff from Gazprom, that Russian energy giant. Other countries, including Germany and the Netherlands, have seen supplies drop. As you rightly point out, Moscow says that's down to technical issues and repairs. But certainly the fear in Brussels and among EU leaders is that Russia is trying to weaponize its energy supplies and Europe's long-term energy dependence on Moscow. That is why EU leaders are rapidly trying to diversify their energy supplies. Here in Paris, President Macron is meeting with the president of the United Arab Emirates. They're expected to sign a deal on hydrocarbon supplies in the future. European Commission President Ursula von der Leyen is meanwhile in Azerbaijan signing a separate deal on energy supplies. Deals have been signed with the United States, with Israel. But before this war, the European Union got 40% of its natural gas supplies from Russia. So that is a very big hole to plug. Oh, thanks so much for all that. Rosie Birch is speaking to us there from Paris.